So this is one of the polarized like questions, and I want you to do this exact question because it gives a slightly more uh, complicated scenario than than the most common case maybe. So so let me do this question both as an example of um, problem solving for uh, uh, you know a question dealing with the polarization of light and intensity of light transmitted through a polarizing filter and um, also um, and also as a demonstration of doing problem set assessments and adding work. So the question says a three polarizing sheet. Okay, so I gotta. I, I like to kind of doodle sketch uh, when I'm reading questions just to make sure I have understood the question completely. So I have three polarizing sheets that I'm thinking of. Uh, transmission axis. The second sheet is already relative to the axis of. Okay, so let me just set the axis of the first one in some direction so that. I have some reference, so this is going to be my, I don't know, some direction. So that's going to be the first sheet that has a polarization axis oriented one way. The second sheet will be oriented as some um, other angle. Uh, I see someone who joined, let me just copy and paste this chat message into the chat because you only see the chat message that has been posted since you joined. Um, so it says the second sheet is oriented at 15 degrees so relative to first, okay. Um, so something like this angle. So this angle, I can't quite label. That theta 2 is 15 degrees. Um, and where's the transmission axis of the third sheet? Okay, I need one more sheet. Um, is oriented, so this is still the axis of the first one and relative uh, or to the axis of the first, right? So the angle here, theta 3, is given by 55 degrees. And what I'm imagining is, I think it, it I, I like to imagine laser beams <laughs> so that I can just think of a ray of light. I can imagine a single ray of light going through the first polarizer, then second polarizer, then third polarizer, just straight through. So it'll come in unpolarized first. There's some initial intensity. And yeah, yeah, instant unpolarized beam. So after the first polarizer, this is something that you just have to know from reading, lecture, etc. that uh, when you have an unpolarized light incident on a polarizer, that the amount of intensity that gets transmitted is half. The way I was attempting to explain in lecture as well, half is polarized this way, half is polarized perpendicular, so the half to the right polarization gets through. It's a simplistic description, but good enough to get to this, uh, to memorize this number. <laughs> so I'm starting with this slide. After passing through the first polarizer, the light at this point will be polarized along the direction of the first polarizer. So. As it's going through the second polarizer, so the description I gave in lecture is that you can think of this uh, orientation of the polarization of light like the direction of the electric field in the light. And the way the polarizing filters work is they take a projection of this vector along the direction, um, uh, projection onto the, the polarizing axis of the polarizer. So let me uh, draw a more easier to interpret graph here. So if I have this x, y uh, axis and kind of imagining looking at this light from a point of view of observer here, then I have my light that is polarized along the x direction. That's the orientation of my polarizing, uh, uh, first the polarizing filter. And I'm going to take a projection onto this new polarizer axis that's at 15 degrees. So the projection there will be uh, drop down a perpendicular segment. So this would be um, this would be um, state of the light after it passes through the second polarizer along this direction. Uh, so the if I had an instant light of some um, amplitude of electric field. 
Here you can see from geometry, the amplitude of the transmitted electric field would be uh, this hypotenuse of this right, let me highlight the right triangle, this right triangle, uh, hypotenuse, times cosine of the angle will give me this adjacent side to the angle. So the amplitude of the electric field uh, times cosine of 15 degrees. I can't write 15. Sorry, one second. <laughs> cosine of... I'm going to edit this out in future videos. <laughs> Cosine of uh, 15 degrees. So this is, describes how your magnitude of electric field is uh, changing as it goes through the polarizing filter. And uh, if you remember from lecture or elsewhere, that intensity of light is proportional to the electric field magnitude squared, then you can kind of remember that this means that compared to the amount of intensity there was, that the transmitted intensity is the incident intensity times this thing squared. So you will get cosine squared theta, cosine squared 15 degrees. So you could go through this reasoning, or you could use what your textbook cites as Malus's law. Um, I tend not to have Malus's law as one of the laws I would memorize in my list of things. It's mainly because I have this uh, line of reasoning in mind that I think that makes more sense to me than um, memorizing a law that looks like a transmitted intensity is the incident times cosine squared theta like y squared, um, the reason why is this. And um, that's why I would just uh, have this um, nature of light remembered than Malus's law, which is a one-off thing and doesn't apply to other things. So, okay, after the second filter, so this is what I have. Let me just uh, keep track of the full expression I have should have so far. The incident intensity for the second filter is I naught over 2. So I transmitted at the point of the second filter around here should be I naught over 2 incident times cosine squared of, uh, let me make some space there. Cosine squared of um, 15 degrees. Good. I'm not done. <laughs> for this, I picked this question because it has uh, three polarizing filters uh, sheets. Um, of all the questions you could get about the polarization of light, this is the most complicated one. That's why I want you to do it. So you have another filter to go through. And the mistake that I can imagine people making most easily with this question is thinking, okay, so I just to do this step one more time to get this as uh, my thing and, and sorry, you know, I naught over two cosine squared 15 degrees, and then just to multiply by this cosine squared factor one more time, cosine squared uh, 55 degrees. And then if you work out the answer and plug it in, you, you will see that uh, it says your answer is incorrect. <laughs> and the reason is you have to think through this uh, physical process. After the light has gone through this second polarizer, its uh, polarization state has changed. It's no longer polarized along the direction it was before. It's polarized along this direction. Along. That's uh, what I indicated with this figure here. So as this is incident on the third polarizer, you are not taking projection from the original polarization state. You are taking the projection from this polarization state onto the axis that's at 55 degrees. Not from this, it's a 55 degrees from the original axis. So um, if you are trying to compare to the relative to the current polarization state, it should be this angle, which would be 55 minus 15, so 40 degrees here, just doing simple <laughs> arithmetic in my head. Um, so the angle that you should be plugging in is not 55 degrees, but 40 degrees. Once, once you kind of learn to think through the polarization states and reason through, it's not 
that complicated, um, but it's uh, the kind of thing that someone who's not uh, used to thinking about polarization instead of like can easily forget. So let me do that. Uh, I'm gonna plug in the numbers. So I can skip the initial intensity because it's asking for fraction of intensity of instant light. So I can just do one half. This accounts for the first polarizing sheet times uh, cosine of 15 degrees squared. And I know how to enter it on my own calculator. 15 first, and then cosine, cosine of 15. And then I can square. Okay, that all looks good. So that accounts for the first polar, uh, oh, sorry, second polarizer. And the third and final polarizer would be uh, 40 degrees, cosine of 40 degrees. So 40, cosine, and then squared. So that's the third and the final polarizer. So let me do equal sign so that I get the whole product. So point. 274 um, is the fraction of the incident intensity. 0 0.274. Um, oh, I can't tell if that's right. Uh, all right. <laughs> so let me just uh, enter something for the next question so that I'm not leaving it blank. I, I think I talked about this uh, lecture reflection question elsewhere. I hope I did. Uh, if not, let me know and I'll just address it elsewhere. Um, so, okay, I answered both questions. I'm going to submit an end <laughs> um, because this is problem set assessment. When you, as you are working through the problem sets, you didn't have this limit. Um, all right, I submit it. Now, um, you will notice that I have forgotten to attach work and that's something I can actually fix later. I, I can fix it here if I choose. But let me imagine someone who forgot to do even that. So I'm just saving work and continuing. And um, it says, OK, I can review my work and scores. Now, if you do review work here, you will see, OK, I got the question answer right. Good. Um, and uh, you won't see any place to attach work here. So if you forgot to attach work before you submit it, the quickest way to get to the screen where you can attach work is to simply refresh this page. Or you can go to the same page again through the modules link. So when you refresh, it'll just refresh the MyOpenMath link. And it um, so you have to use this link, add work. That's where you will get a screen to actually add work. This is a view only screen. That's why I didn't have ad work before. So for ad work, um, so my recommendation when you do this is that you work things out in paper, on paper. If you did, then you can just take a photo of it and upload a photo here. You can, you know, do this, use this. Um, here, because I did it on computer, the easiest thing for me to do would be to just uh, take a screenshot of this. I have a snip tool in Windows. So I have a screenshot that's in my clipboard now. I can do Control V to just paste it in. So that's one way I can do it. You can also type things in if you want to practice LaTeX and whatnot, you know, like uh, Malus's Law. Um, so this doesn't have LaTeX, but it does use what's called ASCII math or uh, syntax, it, um, to LaTeX like a syntax that allows you to type in uh, regular typewriter keys and get a math rendering. So a way to type in Malus's law would be so backtick uh, that starts this ASCII math syntax. I underscore not, uh, sorry, I underscore um, transmitted is equal to uh, I underscore text incident uh, times cosine of angle squared. And I'm using right arrow to exit out of this and it kind of does a preview of what this typeset thing looks like. But you know, this I actually wouldn't recommend for most people. Just taking a photo of your handwritten work and attaching, that's the quickest and that is acceptable. That's what I would recommend. So let me do that. And uh, for question two, no work is uh, necessary. But I guess if you did something like this and can change your answer, um, you could auto to, oh, oops, I didn't mean to submit this. Uh, what I meant to say was, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but so sometimes I kind of miss uh, things that are attached to as work. So I do recommend that you put in actual 
response for question to don't put in a dummy response there. And uh, the main thing I'm looking for is really the uh, specific detail from lecture videos. I think I've explained this elsewhere that I'm uh, check checking to see if uh, people actually watch the lecture videos. That's the main thing I'm testing for here. So um, and uh, if, <laughs> if you're not submitting what I'm looking for, you will see it in my feedback. So please do uh, read my feedback and um, make sure you uh, your next responses are responsive to what I uh, pointed out in the feedback. So let me do save work. So now I can, you know, review work and see that, um, you know, I have work attached. So all the things that required other than maybe on question two is there. So let me show you what it looks like on my side as an instructor when I'm grading. So I'm just going to get this uh, browser window to the correct place where I can just show you the uh, test the student submission and not other people's. Uh, Great. Uh, there's the test to start. Okay, so this is what I see when I'm when I'm grading. Uh, the screen I see is very similar to the screen that you see. Um, I think all this is uh, visible when you are reviewing your work. So it's all very similar. The additional thing that um, I have is well, I get to grade. I had feedback. So here I see the answers correct. I see attached the work. I can kind of recognize where the answers are coming from. And I'll say, uh, looks great. And um, sometimes I don't do the per question thing. I might just say, looks great here. Um, but one thing I can guarantee you is, uh, great, uh, four, two, one. Um, one thing I can guarantee you is that I always leave feedback when I grade, uh, when I manually grade. So if you don't see any feedback from me, then you can take that as an indicator that I haven't graded it yet. So on this view, test to student view, you can see that there's no any comment, nothing here. I see that I have zero out of two, but there's no comment here. And what that means is that this is zero is an automatic score. I haven't reviewed it yet. So here, uh, what I will say is, um, um, uh, I don't see any meaningful lecture reflection uh, grading this uh, like uh, uh, empty response uh, zero out of two. Um, uh, please include lecture reflection next time. No? Um, Please <laughs> see my feedback for Q1. Um, Q2. Um, so I have graded it. So this is zero. I'm just going to let it stand. Uh, most of the people I don't give zero, even uh, really bad responses. As long as it's not practically blank, I'll give you one out of two. Uh, so save changes. So I've changed, uh, saved my feedback. Now let's refresh it here and see what it looks like. Um, or actually, let me uh, kind of start from scratch. So when you are looking for your feedback, the place you would uh, kind of navigate through is you want to go to modules, not gradebook. Your gradebook links won't work quite as well. So from modules, you can go to the uh, same assessment item where you made a submission. And when you go there, you're at this screen. And now when I click review working gradebook, It'll show me the score I had, the feedback that's there. Once you see feedback, then that is the final score. You don't have to worry about it reduce, getting reduced down to three out of five for not, no work being attached. Because that will sometimes happen if you didn't attach any work. Um, and yeah, yeah, there's that. So this is the feedback. So uh, with the problems and assessment, um, I do recommend that you check back uh, before you do your next one um, to see if uh, I, there's any feedback from me and so that if I left any note for you to do something differently, you will see that before uh, moving on.